Hey there guys, I hope that you're doing well. In this video, I'm gonna be comparing two of my planetary telescopes side by side. Now, it's gonna be a Jupiter shootout. Over on the right, we have my Skywatcher Skymax 180 Pro. It's a Maxitov with a 2700 mil focal length at f15. Paired that up with a 2.9 micron pixel camera, the 585 from Player One. The reason being is that in both cases, we are gonna to try to adhere to the rule of five, effectively where you take the pixel pitch in microns of your camera and then multiply that by five and that should be about the focal ratio that you're imaging at. So it's an almost perfect match in the Max Tufts case. Uh, perfect, I think, would be a 14.5, but we can't do that. <laughs> so it's as close as it's gonna get. But really this means we can get crisp images without having to use any uh, Barlow optics. Ideally, anyway. Now over on the left is my Celestron Edge HD 11 and in the same kind of case, this is an F10 native telescope. So uh, obviously a lot faster, if you like, uh, natively than the Maxitov. So I've paired that up with a two micron pixel pitch camera. So that rule of five matches up absolutely perfectly in that case. That's the 676 MC from ZWO. So all that's left to do, these scopes are cooled, collimated and as you can see, focused. Uh, I just massively overexposed Jupiter in order to get the Galilean moons to uh, to show very brightly as they are effectively at these kinds of focal lengths point sources and you can focus your telescope perfectly on those just using a bat enough mask like uh, self-plug, like the ones I manufacture and sell in the links down below on my eBay and Etsy pages. Anyway, I'm gonna come back to you in a moment. I'm just gonna go out there and get these off the ends of the scopes and uh, let's see what they can do. All right then, I'm back and I've been playing around with these for quite some time now, trying to get them as good as I possibly can. And uh, in both cases, you know what, I'm really impressed. I, I have to say, I feel like the Maxitov over on the right here is punching above its weight to be even close to the Edge HD 11, given the huge difference in aperture between the two of them, 180 mil versus 280 mil. For me, there is a clear winner and it is the Edge HD 11. Um, even on this quite average night, it's pulled out pretty staggering image of Jupiter, I have to say. I, I think it looks wonderful from my location here. There's there's so much observable detail. I'm I'm enjoying myself, you know what I mean? I'm really enjoying using that scope and looking at this uh, this this transit, actually, as it happens. This shadow transit just appearing, as you can see uh, on the live stack there in both cases. That's not to say I'm not enjoying the Maxitov, but given that I've got both of them side by side, um, which one would you look at? You know what I mean? It, it's probably going to be the edge. Um, now there are some differences in terms of color balance that are uh, can't be resolved on this this night. Um, owing, I reckon, in part to the fact that the 585 in use on the Maxitov on the right does not have a uh, blocking window, so it's letting through full spectrum light effectively. Whereas the uh, the 676 over on the Edge HD on the left does have a blocking window, so even though the sensor is capable, the window that comes as default with it blocks that out. So this isn't something that I could have rectified tonight in a hurry, so I decided to just go with it and, and leave it as it is, and it can just be part of the differences between these two. But that will slightly disadvantage the Maxitov as it's having to deal with all that extra uh, wavelengths of light coming in. But it also might advantage it slightly in terms of signal to noise ratio, but it still hasn't been enough to keep up with the SNR that's being produced by that larger aperture on the um, on the Edge HD. And what I mean by that really is that even while both of these are using 10 millisecond exposures, and I've just evened things out with gain between them to get roughly the same kind of uh, exposure, uh, it's it's close but not quite perfect it was as good as i could do it without dipping uh, the 676 below its hcg switch at 180 gain i'm currently using it at 200 but anyway i digress uh the the key thing about the signal to noise ratio is that when you've got a higher snr you can push the uh the wavelets more effectively and you, as you can possibly see i've been able to be just a touch more aggressive with the wavelets over on the the edge hd image than i have over on the uh, the the 585 and, and Skymax image right there, and it shows up as some extra details being recoverable over on that shot on the left. Now, if we just look at the shots side by side and we take a look at a few of the main features, so uh, this white dot here and here, you can see they're clearly resolved in both cases, no problem at all. It looks slightly more detailed, I will say, on the, uh, the edge, and there are some small hints at 
kind of contrast bands just down at the uh, six o'clock mark or so right there, which are also sort of visible over on the Skymax. It's a little bit harder to see, but you can still see them. You see the GRS, the Great Red Spot, just disappearing around the right hand side over there about three o'clock on both images. And uh, you can also see a brightening in the center of the GRS as well on the edge and the max. So they're, you know, almost side by side there in terms of uh, comparable details. Now, one way, let's say uh, we can start to pull away some differences between these. So if you take a look again, if you draw your eyes uh, once more to the, the small white dots, if you take the leftmost dot, you can see that there are two more small features above it right there at the tip of my mouse pointer and there, which aren't resolvable uh, individually over on the Sky Max. They look more like a, a line um, kind of feature instead. So that's just one more hint of detail being recovered that we couldn't get um, in any other case. It looks like these small contrast features around the side here are more finely resolved on the edge to my eye. There are multiple bands visible next to this transit right here. You can see multiple different bands of contrast and color leading into this whirl just here, which aren't quite so easily resolvable on the Sky Max. You can see that there are bands, but you can't tell much more visual information about them. And it's, it's less coherent how it goes into that whirl next to it too, leading up, you know, behind the GRS right there. I think one of the more telling areas is perhaps up at the top region right here, the uh, the north of the planet, if you like, um, around 12 o'clock. There is fine texture detail visible in these uh, these cloud structures up at the top. It isn't just noise. It's, you know, we can see things going on up there. It looks more like noise on the, the Skymax. I will say you can see there's something there, but it's not quite able to be resolved. And another area where this is really starting to become apparent, at least as uh, you know, the planets rotating into view like this, this area here, which um, obviously it's cloud features, but just for want of a better explanation of what I feel like I see, it looks like some sort of Bob Ross mountainscape or something, snow-capped mountains. <laughs> but that that feature is what I'm talking about anyway. Um, it's it's quite a lot more detailed i would say on the edge i don't know oh, well this is going to come across in the video for you guys um to see but yeah i promise you i can see far more detail over on the left hand shot than i can on the right especially in that region and uh really everywhere i look if if i was to ask you you know which one of these are you going to look at as i said before it's probably going to be the edge and and that's the way that i feel too if i'm just being honest with myself so it has been a useful comparison in some way in that it's made me feel like if I am going to put some effort into, you know, quality planetary captures or chasing after them, because, you know, the nights that we can actually do that come few and far between and you've got to be ready to go, <laughs> I probably do want to leave the edge set up for that kind of thing if I want to get the best possible images. It'd be nice to re-visit uh, this with a uh, an IR pass filter on both cameras, but as as I said, it's not something I can do tonight in a hurry and uh, this has been revealing enough for me i think so overall i'm impressed with the sky max but i'm very impressed with the edge um it's not much more really to be said than that i would love to hear your thoughts on it guys uh, I, I really would it looks like the scene's going a little bit worse now so i'm probably going to pack up and and leave it at that it's quite late <laughs> so yeah uh, i look forward to seeing you in the next video until then though look after yourselves and clear skies